So this one, I, I think is, I think this is a, this is a good modification of the of the strategy. Uh, my recommendation for this team was that they really focus on one of the color, the two modifications they wanted to do, because generally, and this is, this is advice that um, I always try to give to anyone building strategies is anytime you want to implement a change, changes, you, you want to implement sequentially instead of in parallel. So you can observe the effect of each one, uh, figure out if there's an issue, fix it, and then move on to the next modification. That, that will help you build more complex strategies uh, in a more reliable way. So let's take a look at uh, what their, their video shows. It's me, Constantine, and uh, my colleague, Stan. Today, we'd like to present our own version of pure market making strategy. At the moment, uh, you can see my pie chart instance with um, our PMM controller, generic controller. Basically, it's an extension of PMM.wifi with a few tweaks that we decided to introduce, such as reference price that is computed from X price and at the moment I think it supports Uniswap v3 prices feed and a few tweaks related to how spreads and the uh, how spread is uh, controlled. So let's have a look at these uh, basically default parameters, but starting with uh, yeah, candles connector and indicator parameters such as uh, Nutter and MACD. Yep, this is our uh, new stuff. I'd like to explore more on uh, the X feed part and my colleague Stan will uh, elaborate on working with uh, MACD and other parameters. So in the config, we provide an opportunity to to identify that uh, node to request uh, and work with Uniswap. Uh, then there is an um, int parameter that is responsible for press refresh. And this is the feeds parameter that uh, identifies uh, token addresses and uh, a fee to adjust the price. So under the hoods, the V3, Uniswap V3 uh, feed is initialized with uh, the parameters such as name, token in, token out, token out in USDC, and both fees in USDC and just fee. So in, in this scenario, we're focused on working with uh, tokens on uh, wrapped ETH, and uh, basically we decided to convert it via USDC. So what uh, this logic does is that it converts token to wrapped ETH and then to use the TV or use the TV. So it's a to hop logic, I think. And basically, this uh, logic works with uh, Web3 directly. We identify that quarter address. And basically, here is the place where we get to find the price and uh, allow them to uh, allow it to uh, feed into uh, PMM config. At this, this stage, I'm going to hand over my voice to my colleague Stan. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. So, as Constantine described, the first part is about the price. So compared to PMM.py, this version, it introduces price control. So we get our custom DEX price, for example. And uh, this part of the code, it shows where the strategy decides uh, which price to use. So if there is a DEX price, it will use uh, the DEX price. If the DEX price is none or is zero, the strategy will use the existing uh, mid price on the exchange. So we are, we are always with some price here. And uh, the second part uh, is the spread multiplier. So if uh, if candles uh, if we didn't receive candles from the exchange, we treat it like the the basic PMMPY with a fixed spread and the mid price. But if there are candles, we go and calculate our uh, coefficients based on uh, NATR and uh, MACD. So here we calculate these parameters and then we shift the price and the spread based based on these coefficients. So for example, we receive the dex price; it's used as the reference price, and then we also uh, shift this uh, based on the uh, coefficients and then spread also. And uh, next uh, in um, uh, update uh, processing uh, data comes uh, the main logic of the um, next after the reference price and spread multiplier comes uh, the, the main logic here for um, we introduced uh, the feature of uh, starting uh, position so before that this strategy uh, didn't see the token balance on the wallet so it's when you started it tried to accumulate the token balance and after that it's placed sell orders but here we introduced starting base and starting quote so that when uh, we as a market maker start with the uh, existing inventory uh, the strategy knows about it and it can from from the first tick it can start placing both sides uh, of the order book uh, and um, then when uh, it gets it gets uh, fills it then uses the initial inventory class uh, the unrealized panel and the position uh, it helps so i believe it's we 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 kept uh, the existing deviation and skew logic so that uh, the strategy can adjust uh, the order sizes based on the inventory disbalance we just added the the, the, the additional parameters here. So yes, and to add, so we also overwrite our formats, uh, the format status method, just to make uh, everything visible and clear. So we are looking into our inventory in base and quotes. We are looking and observing text price in real time, uh, spread multiplier and reference price for visibility. So I think we can launch the strategy now. So 
to demonstrate in a real world example how it works. Uh, we have a connector in uh, Max. We, we have we linked our Max account with a few mm, amounts to to test the strategy. So let me run this. Here it will load for some time. You can do twice the speed. It's taking a while to initiate the bot. Let's wait. Yeah, so the start in the inventory it will be around 50 50 token and use the D. So let's see. Let's run status live command. Yes, from here, and we can see in the top on the portfolio location. So how much balance we allocate for trading. Then goes reference price and spread multiplier, and also dex price. So dex price is the initial price, and then reference price is the dex price multiplied by our coefficient. The same is for spread multiplier. So look at lock veins. The orders are getting created. We might wait for actual fields. Yep, here we go. We have one open order fields. We increased our base assets, introduced our cold assets, and our uh, percentages were calculated accordingly. This updates, they take, they take time, but uh, here we, we see some of the fields, they get into this uh, status life console and they have accumulated some base assets. Our buy orders, they get filled on the exchange. Yep, the strategy and the whole video demonstrates our efforts on optimizing uh, in the .py file and uh, the logic around it. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Yes, thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Sorry guys, I was going to stop sharing, but that was an amazing um, strategy actually. I, I really appreciated how you guys use all, all the features of the new V2 framework. Uh, the PMM controller and uh, and also creating a data feed using Uniswap v3. I was going to say the same thing. You use everything that you have available there, so congratulations for that. I saw in the in the formal status that you have a bunch of insufficient balance, so it will be good to understand what is happening there because you're trying to place executors that you don't have balance. So the executor is telling you, hey, you don't have enough balance to place this. So it would be good to understand if there is an issue with the config or with the executor or with the controller. But well, overall, very good because you use a data feed, you use position hold, you use executors, controllers, well. So congratulations.